Today on the Metal Roofing Channel, we are talking about a steel market update for Q3 of 2022 with special guests from US Steel. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel, welcome to Q&A Mondays. I'm Thad Barnett from Sheffield Metals, and today we are talking about the metal markets, the steel market specifically, and we're talking about you know how that's changed over Q2 going into Q3 here in 2022, um, what numbers we're seeing, what trends we're seeing, and I've got some really great guests with me here today. I have Brett from Sheffield Metals, he's the Director of Supply Chain, and I have Ben from US Steel, Director of Sales. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. So let's let's jump in. Let's talk about, you know, to this point, what have we seen happen with steel um, in Q2? Let's kind of recap, you know, up until this point. The second quarter has been uh, a, a different, obviously a change since the, you did your last video for the first quarter. Uh, it's been a, quite a roller coaster ride over the course of, of 2000, 2022. First, of course, uh, steel prices going into February timeframe were coming down. Steel inventories were a little bit of a destocking period. In the second quarter, we saw a restocking period. Uh, prices moved up obviously very swiftly uh, after the war broke out in Ukraine. Uh, the past six weeks, that has softened a bit. Um, inventories have been brought down a little bit uh, to kind of align with the market. So that's what we've seen up to this point. Um, currently, we're seeing service center shipments starting to pick up uh, versus where inventory levels are. So we'll have to watch that trend as the time continues. Okay, and you know what I love about these conversations is we can talk about where we are and then how it applies to people's businesses you know, and their everyday lives. And we'll get to that a little bit later in this video. But first, let's talk about what numbers we have right now. Uh, here we are uh, just at the end of July, 2022. So what kind of market numbers are we seeing with steel right now? Uh, so today, published numbers that we've seen in the last week of July, 840 to 870 on hot roll. Uh, we're seeing 1220 to 1240 on uh, coated and cold roll as of today's number. Uh, again, those are published numbers. We've seen volatility in those with kind of a, a peak of the market in the May time frame uh, to where we are today. So what do those numbers mean for steel consumers right now? It's important to watch the, the, the trends of pricing, I would say. Um, again, the, the, what we are an advocate of is, is always buying what you need instead of necessarily worrying about what the, what the number is, what the next number is going to be. I mean, the big thing that we see overall is that demand is good overall uh, in, in most of the sectors that we sell into. So we're, we're, again, we're an advocate of not necessarily worrying about tomorrow's number and trying to determine if you need to buy based on that. We're an advocate of buying what you need to support your customers. Yeah, I mean, so if you're buying a ton of inventory because you're expecting the price to go up and then it doesn't, you might be putting yourself in some trouble there. Yes, we, we think that's important to reduce risk in the supply chain. Have you seen, uh, as you said, you're talking about shipments, shipments picking up where people might think that we're um, close to a bottom? Uh, what, what do you look at that might determine um, how close we are to, you know, the bottom of things. Yeah, there's a lot of signals that we look at. We definitely look at shipment pace. We look at you know inquiry activity. We look at um, a lot of different mar market indicators. Again, MSCI's uh, service center data is something that we look closely at to see how shipment paces are performing. So uh, a lot of the same thing a lot of our customers are looking for to try to sense you know where market pricing is going. And you mentioned demand before. Are we what kind of demand are we seeing in construction and steel in the market overall? Overall, I mean, again, we see it very strong from a lot of the industries we sell into. A lot of uh, published reports we've read. Really, the only sector that that has been that is currently down overall is automotive. Um, we understand that with the supply chain challenges that they've had, uh, energy has been very good. Uh, you know, which we really haven't had the past couple of years, which has been improving. Construction demand. Everything we've heard from our customers is it's, it's pretty good. It's okay. The the challenge is kind of the, the forward thinking. It's it's difficult to see weeks, months, quarters ahead as it, as it may have been in the past. Having said that, overall, you know, housing numbers are, 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 are good. The, the backlog indicators, a lot of the forward-looking indicators for construction are good in terms of dodge momentum, uh, the architectural billing index, um, all very positive signs looking forward into the future. And what can we expect from the market going into Q3? Let's focus here on Q3. Like I said, we're at the end of July, about to enter August. So what can we expect with, with steel uh, going into Q3? 
I mean, this is, again, I, I want to focus this conversation on construction, but it really is important to understand the whole whole sector. And as I mentioned, really automotive being the only sector that's, that's really down at this point, energy improving, construction being pretty good. You know, we see a potential turn on the service center front. I think that's all going to really help from a steel perspective. That's my opinion. And really on the auto side, as we see some of these supply chain issues start to improve, I think that's going to be, that's pent up demand uh, that, that's out there for us in the future. So I think we, we, we have some positivity as we enter the latter part of the year. You know, when I'm, we're talking about Q3, but you know, from an from a order book perspective, you know, we're kind of already starting to move toward, towards Q4 here very soon. So we're in the latter part of the year at this point. You know, there have been, in addition to those positive feelings, some potential fear in the market, um, talks of recession coming or being in one in the early stages. You know, how does that affect, you know, something like the steel market, construction overall? You know, what can a business owner think about, you know, when, when he hears or when they hear about talk like that? Yeah, it's important to stay close to, to your customers, uh, stay close to your suppliers, um, you know, making sure you have all the information as best you can. Don't worry too much about necessarily like like we were talking about taking a position as opposed to buying and selling what you need. Um, you know, making sure you you have that line of sight for what it is that you need to do, so you're taking that risk out of the supply chain. And Brett, can you talk about how important it is to align yourself with a, a manufacturer who is has good relationships with steel mills who can get product when customers need it? Can you talk about that? Well, I'll reference you know our relationship with U.S. Steel. Um, they've been a, a fantastic. Uh, a vendor for us. Um, we've had a great relationship with them for many years. We like consistency, as do our customers. Um, you know, we don't want to step into the market when prices are down and try and build up inventory and, and play games. It's every every month we want similar tons. And again, you know, when times are good or times are bad, you need um, a vendor, a, a customer that uh, is with you. So. Um, it's, it's been a great relationship. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. now, I know we've talked about steel and construction, but are there any, um, in, is there any information about aluminum? Because that's something that our customers like to know about as well. Yeah, I, I don't think they're um, neck and neck, uh, similar commodities. They, they're different markets, but ultimately everything is driven on a macro level. So, you know, when the economy is going like gangbusters, um, those commodities go up in price, they're harder to get. I think we're, I would say, in a, a good spot. We've found some type of equilibrium. Um, prices have come down from their highs, both on steel and aluminum. So obviously the expenditures that we're putting out there, the amount of money we have in inventory is uh, is, is better, more sure. positive. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, looking at Q, Q3, I think these are good times to you know, maintain the momentum we've built up. And I really don't see any huge um, hurdles going forward. Um, I, I think the, the Q3, Q4, the end of the year is, is going to be good for us. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, discussing the future, you know, we want to talk about trends as well. So what kind of trends, you know, have, have you seen with U.S. Steel? Uh, maybe you've seen with Sheffield Metals throughout the industries and in construction overall? Yeah, I mean, in terms of steel overall and into construction, sustainability is, is the number one trend that we're seeing. Um, going back a year ago, um, there really weren't as many active conversations really with our construction customers on the sustainability front. I would say that that has uh, launched rapidly this year. Um, you know, to, to offset this, U.S. Steel has launched a, a, a brand, our, our brand uh, Vertex, which reduces uh, your carbon intensity by up to 70 to 80% versus a uh, traditional integrated steel making product. Uh, we're very proud of that. We've also are proud of joining Responsible Steel as a member, and then we received the coveted uh, site certification for Big River Steel. Uh, that, that's been critical to us to kind of align with where our customers are going, really particularly in construction and other industries. Uh, Responsible Steel is, it's, there's 12 pillars to it. Uh, based on all different things that are ESG related. So there's there's the environmental aspect, but then there's also everything else with the ESG. Sure. Um, what, what types of trends have you seen with Sheffield Metals and talking to our customers and hearing from salespeople? Yeah, I think um, so far uh, sales have been strong this year. Um, we don't see any uh, significant downturn um, on the foreseeable future. Uh, obviously there's always, you know, headwinds when you talk about inflation and um, interest rates rising. Um, we are keeping an eye on that. 
Um, but for the most part, we're uh, forecasting a good uh, 2022. And what about the difference between, you know, maybe the residential construction market versus commercial market? You know, have you heard anything in regards to that? I heard a stat the other day um, where uh, cancellations on new home builds were um, at historic levels. So on the residential side, I, I think there is some slowing. Um, on the commercial side, uh, we really haven't seen that. Um, you know, sales a bit robust. Sure. Yeah, I would agree that the non-residential side has been continues to be a strength for, for sure. So Ben, I'm really glad we have you here because you can speak to what U.S. Steel is doing, you know, going into the future I and mean, helping us prepare for the future of steel. No, I appreciate that. And again, I really appreciate the time and the opportunity to have this conversation. It's been fantastic. Um, you know, U.S. Steel's got a lot of stuff going on for the steel industry, also particularly, you know, within the construction sector. Um, I really do want everybody to understand that we are a company that has a product in, in domestically that is mined, melted, and manufactured in the USA. That's important to us. Uh, we continue to invest in, in, the, in the U.S. We are, have just announced uh, just this past year uh, an expansion of our Big River facility, which will be a $3 billion expansion with two, two additional EAFs in Osceola, Arkansas. I'm very proud of that. As part of that, we're going to have uh, what's unique to the U.S., the only a U.S. facility that has an endless casting and rolling operation uh, that, again, continues to move us down that sustainability journey for our customers. Uh, we've also announced a, uh, a new coating line that will be a Big River Steel uh, that's really for a lot of heavily focused on the construction market. About 75% of, the, of that unit will, will be selling Galvalume. So, again, wow. we're proud of that. We're, we're happy to invest in construction in the U.S., um, and that, that's where we're headed. So awesome. I appreciate it. So we've talked about trends, we've talked about numbers, you know, what does someone uh, as a consumer of steel, maybe buying steel for their business, what do they do with this information? So in my opinion, I think it's really important to talk to your suppliers, you know, to try to have conversations around how you go to market, you know, what you're looking to obtain, buy, buy what you need, like I talked about, um, talk to your customer, talk to your suppliers about what they're seeing, talk to your customers and have that open communication. I think that's really great for the supply chain to be open, have those good conversations. Great point. What about Sheffield Metals customers? Yeah, you know, um, we try and maintain as much transparency as possible. You know, um, freight issues, uh, freight costs, um, freight costs this year are up 30% year over year. So um, those are important things. So while we see the bare substrate pricing falling over the last few months, other costs have um, basically made up for, for that downward trend and, you know, prices overall probably are not as down as much as the substrate is down because of these other, you know, labor, freight and such. So. Yeah, you really have to pay attention to the full picture. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when someone's purchasing coated steel, you know, paint is another huge one sure. that, that people have to pay attention mm -hmm. to. So understanding that whole uh, circle of product mm -hmm. is really important for their business. And, and delays, you know, um, labor shortages cause delays. Um, which translates to freight labor shortages. Yep. So yep. Um, lead times are, are, are critical for us, for our customers. And, and again, having that open dialogue so that you can prepare for those things and, and work through them. So I got into the steel business 30 years ago. And, you know, back then things were much more regional. You know, what was LTV doing at the time or what was... Timken or U.S. Steel, you know, Braddock and, you know, yeah. everything was, again, regionalized. Interesting. Now it's a global, you know, environment where something going on in Ukraine has has an effect here. Maybe not directly, but, you know, yeah. that butterfly effect. Ben, Brett, thank you so much. I really appreciate the time today. And remember, the Metal Roofing Channel, Sheffield Metals, and U.S. Steel is committed to bringing you the most up-to-date information about the steel market, aluminum market, and the construction industry overall. Comment down below if you have any questions. Subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel. And as always, I'm Thad Barnett. We'll catch you next time.